Um, can you guys can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. All right. So, um, um, I had some I had some issues. Apparently, I'm com I learned um, the last few days that I'm completely and totally um, incompetent. At least I was a couple of few days ago at um, editing videos. Now I'm sort of just mildly um, incompetent. Um, but I finally this morning um, got a video um, of uh, the sort of the first lecture um, posted. Um, obviously, I got it up too late for you guys to have a reasonable chance to um, to review it. And, and in the future, I'm going to get these things um, up, you know, uh, the, 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 the week the week before. Um, and so I really apologize for that. Um, I posted um, homework one, um, and um, it's it's probably about average length for um, for for homeworks, maybe on a little bit on the short side, just to give you um, a little bit of a little bit of context. Um, but um, and so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to um, luckily it's sort of like the gist of the lecture um, is, is 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 fairly sort of can can, can be done sort of fairly um, consistent um, fairly succinctly. So I, I um, suggest that you um, try to watch the, the sort of the whole like 40-minute um, lecture video that I made about this stuff. But I'm going to give you a sort of a quick rundown of the, of, of the, of the, of the key points from it that will allow you to, um, to, to work on um, um, most many of the homework problems. Okay, and then I'm going to um, start going through um, homework problems as, a, as sort of examples of, of, of what I want you to be able to take away from um, the lecture material, okay, or, um, from, you know, from, from last week and, 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 and this time. Okay, so um, just as a so, I'm just going to do like sort of a, a, a 10, 15 minute sort of um, rundown on 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 basically um, system responses um, for um, linear time invariant um, systems. Hello, so it's always a button. Um, is there a way to flip the screen? So I think we're seeing the writing backwards at the moment. Oh, you're seeing it backwards. Yeah, there is. Just one second. Thank you. There's also a couple of questions in the chat box. I'm not sure if you're able to see them. But... I will look at them now. OK, is the screen flipped for you guys? No. N not flipped? Yeah, not flipped yet. OK. OK, let me do this another way. <clears throat> Let me just do this. I'm going to start and stop it. Is the video flipped yet? Not yet. That's only flipping my video. Strange. Okay, one second. Now it's mirrored. That that worked. Okay. All right. <clears throat> you said there were some questions in the. Um, <clears throat> it probably just be easier if you guys just. Okay. All right. Um, is homework um, one due this Friday or next Friday? No, it's next Friday. So in general, 
the homeworks, whatever we, we talk about during one week of lectures, obviously the first two weeks are um, a little bit screwed up because we just had sort of one lecture each on Wednesdays. But in general, the homeworks will be associated with a lecture for a given week. So we'll have a lecture, on, you, know, we'll have, we'll have, you know, we'll have the lecture videos posted hopefully at the, the end, of, end of the previous week on Friday or Saturday. Um, and then we'll have lectures on Monday or Tuesday of, of, of one week. And then the um, homework will be due Friday that's uh, nine days beyond the, 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 the Wednesday class time. Okay? Um, will this lecture recording be available to you? And the answer is um, yes. I forgot to record. I somehow didn't had a bumble in, um, in last week's lecture video, but this one and the um, previous, and sorry, this one and, and the forthcoming um, class videos um, are going to get um, posted. Okay? <clears throat> this afternoon or tomorrow. All right. Um, any other questions before we get underway with the material itself? No. Okay. So what we're going to talk about, like I mentioned, is, is system responses for L LTI systems. And by um, an LTI, the L is, um, is, is, is for linear, and um, TI stands for um, time invariant. Okay? Um, and so we're going to talk about... Um, these um, uh, responses for, for linear time invariant systems, because it, it turns out that, um, that for systems that are linear um, in, in, in time invariant, um, the, the, there's, a, there's a really sort of a, a systematic way that you can um, go about um, in determine, determining the system response that just isn't possible if the system is either nonlinear um, or um, time or, or, or time varying. Okay, and, um, and, and because you can. Um, so you, you can sort of solve linear time in, invariant systems in a really sort of systematic way. Um, it's sort of like the cornerstone for, for looking at sort of the basic um, systems analysis. And even though most biological systems um, are neither linear nor time invariant, it turns out that linear time invariant approximations, at least in, in certain um, sort, of, um, sort of scopes of, um, of, of operation, um, and that often can be sort of like sort of um, um, pieced together. Um, um, can, can work um, really well to um, characterize a sort of a really wide range of kind of biological behavior. And so this certainly can't get everything, um, but it's really kind of important to understand sort of linear time invariant analysis because, because um, it is so sort of tractable and, 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 and generalizable and sort of easy to do. And, and it can be applied um, as an approximation to um, lots of interesting sort of biological and, and physical systems. Okay. Um, all right, so um, <clears throat> so what in particular about sort of linear um, time invariant systems um, makes the system responses um, th that um, we're going to look at sort of um, so um, so systematic or, or, or tractable? And so um, um, the answer is that if you and so this is largely duplicative of the video, but I'm just going to sort of cut it short um, in, in some sense and try to be a little more concise about things. And, and the main thing about linear time invariant systems is that sort of, you know, if you know the um, response, um, and we call this response H, um, <coughs> well, let's just call it um, Y of T or Y of N, right, um, to uh, um, to, to sort of, the, in a way, sort of like the, the simplest, sort of most basic input, right, to the, <clears throat> um, and we'll, we'll call this a unit um, impulse function, okay, um, input, okay, um, and we're going to denote this, we're going to use this unit impulse function not so much that we're going to denote it by, by a certain letter. And we're going to call it delta of t or delta of n. So this delta of t or delta n is the, is the unit um, impulse function. Okay. And so if you know the response um, y of t or y of n that's associated with um, a unit impulse function being used as, 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 as the input. So let me just write this more clearly. It would be like you know x of t is in general what we use for input equals delta of t, right, or x of n um, equals delta of n, right? Um, then 
the um, <clears throat> then the um, output um, can be um, found um, for any possible input. Okay. Um, and in today's lecture, we're going to specifically um, do the, the discrete time um, case um, with x of n and, um, and, and, and delta of n, okay, and, and the output in general, y of n. And, and then we'll, we'll use what we sort of um, find for the discrete case to sort of extrapolate it to the continuous time case, okay? Um, and so the, the response, and so remember, the general way that we kind of formulate these um, is the um, system responses is that we have some, um, in the discrete case, x of n, which goes into some um, system as, as an input, and um, it gives an output um, y of n. Okay? Um, and so, um, in, in the, the context um, we're talking about here, the idea is that we'll put some um, input that's the, in, that's the unit impulse into the system. That's what xn is going to be equal to. Right, and we're going to get out um, an output, and this output is going to be called since this is an Im a unit impulse. The output that we're going to get out has a, spe a certain special name, and that output is called. <coughs> we should denote it h of n, and it's it, it's um, it's called the impulse response. <coughs> right. So if we put an impulse in. Right, a unit impulse and then the response to the system is called the, the, the impulse response and of course that's equal to the y of n for this particular input. All right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through um, an example about how you can use um, this in the impulse response um, for a system to, um, to figure out what the um, input would be for, for any possible system. Okay? And this is such a sort of a, turns out to be such a, a, a sort of a powerful thing that um, often um, we're going to actually represent, we're gonna, since the impulse response determines how the system is going to behave, we can actually sort of use, sort of, um, use this impulse response as sort of shorthand for what the system is or, or, or what we call the system. Okay? And so in general, um, we, we can actually represent the system by h of n, because h of n the, the impulse response tells us everything about how the system tells us how the system will respond to any possible input, and so we can actually call the system h of n as a sort of a shorthand, and then realize that um, any given x of n will go through this system h of n and give us an output y of n. So this is, of course, just a you know just a way to kind of um, rewrite this um, um, rewrite um, th th this top. Um, sort of box diagram description, right? Here we're just rep we're replacing sy system by, by h of n, which is um, an impulse response that, that, that it gives us enough information to describe how the system will always act, okay? All right, so what we're going to do is um, go through an, an example um, in, in, in discrete time that, that shows us, like, you know, um, how we can make use of linearity and time invariant to sort of um, 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 and and this impulse response to get the output at, 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 at any time. All right, and so um, here's an here's an example. And so in my, in my example, um, let's just make up an x of n. And so I'll say that x of n um, maybe looks like the following. So this is zero, and maybe x of n um, looks something like. Okay, and so it's values of two, three, and four. Sorry for the bad writing. Okay, so um, just to be sort of super clear, this is two here, and this would be like four up here. Okay, um, and those values of two, three, and four um, are for um, time steps um, zero, one, and two. Okay, and then at time step three um, and four, um, the value of x of n is equal to zero. Um, and <coughs> at time step, similarly, at negative one and negative two and negative three and negative four, um, the, um, x of n is also 
equal to zero, right? So I'm drawing this maybe a little bit sort of funny because um, this is this is actually this is a discrete function, so it actually only has values where these sort of dots are here. Okay, I'm just drawing it as as a sort of a continuous line, just because it's easier for me to draw that way. Okay, like an alternative way to draw um, x of n would just be to draw like little little sort of like um, pulses, like at these, just just draw the dots alone, or to draw the sometimes people draw the dots with like a little stem on them. Or whatever, but I'll, I'll generally draw it this way because I just kind of like to do it this way. All right. Okay. Any questions about that stuff? Okay. So if we have um, x of n defined like this, right? Um, what we can do is um, realize that well, linearity says that the response to any possible x of n, right, um, is is equal to the sum of the responses to some x1 of n and x2 of n and possibly x3 of n. That, um, that together sum up to make x of n. So we can break x of n into, in, 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 into parts right? Um, that together add up to x of n, then we can, and we can find um, the responses to these parts. Right? And the idea is that we would, um, we would define these parts so they're simpler and easier to work with. Right? And then that will give us, um, <coughs> sorry, I lost my zoom window, so let me make sure. Guys, OK. And that, 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 will, that, that will give us what, what the output is, OK? And so I'll, I'll define um, an, an h of n, so we can sort of work the problem um, arbitrarily as maybe um, something like this, OK? So h of n will take a value 2 um, at time step 0, and it will take a value of 1 at time step 1, and it will take a value of 0 at time step 2, and all future time steps, okay? And it'll be um, 0 at time step negative 1 and minus 2 and minus 3 and minus 4, um, et cetera. Okay, so this is an example of x of n and, and an example of, of h of n. And then what we're going to do is, 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 like I said, break down x of n into parts that are simpler, okay? And the parts that I'll choose, okay, um, I'll call them um, x0 of n, <coughs> um, x1 of n, and x2 of n. Okay? And I'll, I'll draw them on, on, on different sort of axes. I'm going to change my pen here. Okay? And I'll draw them on separate axes, all right? And um, for x0 of n, what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just extract the part of x of n that exists at time step 0, OK? And so this will be 0, right, up until time step 0. And then right at time step 0, it'll take a value of 2, which is, which is what x of 0 is, OK? And then it will um, then be 0 um, thereafter, right? At, at at x of um, x zero of n when n is when is n is equal to one, right or two or three or four, like all these other times, okay, um, and um, and then um, x <coughs> x one of n, we will um, make this basically um, be the part of n that exists at time step one only, right, and it'll look something like this, right. So at time step 0, it'll still be 0. At time step 1, it'll have value 3. At time step 2, it'll go back to, um, to 0. All right? And analogously, um, x, um, x2 of n will have value only when n is equal to 2. And that value will be the value of, of x, will be x of 2, which is 4. Et cetera. Okay? All right, so we've broken down um, x0, um, x of n into x0 of n, x1 of n, x2 of n. Okay? And there's one little th thing, but, but crucial, that I forgot to tell you, and that is like, how exactly do we find, define this unit um, impulse function? So some of you may have come across this before, but maybe not all of you. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to define um, delta of n. Okay? This is a function of n, just like x of n and x0 of n and x1 of n. We're going to find this unit impulse function um, as the following. 
right? Just make it look just like that, okay? And this unit impulse function will be of value zero everywhere except when the time is equal to zero. And we call it a unit impulse function because it's a sort of unity height and it basically just has a height of one at um, x equal to, um, sorry, at n equal to zero, okay? Um, and so another way to write this is in value one here. This is sort of what matches up to that value. Okay, and so if, if we, uh, and of course H of n is the um, is a system's response when you give an input that that's delta of n. All right. So if you think about that for for, for just a minute now, um, the, well we can we can we can use this to sort of make progress on what the outputs corresponding to each of these inputs is. Okay. So x zero of n would if if this was an input by itself would give an, an output that I'm going to call y0 of n, right? And since x0 of n is, just looks just like a unit impulse, right, except that it's scaled up by a factor of 2, right, then the output is going to be exactly h of n, which is the output that you would get for a, a unit impulse, but scaled up by a factor of 2, right? And so y0 of n will basically lo would look just like h of n, except scaled up by a factor of 2. So like this first, um, at, at, time, at time step 0, it'll value 4. And time step 1, it'll have a value of 2, as opposed to 2 and 1, which is what you have if, if the unit impulse were going in. right? Um, <clears throat> and the reason we can do the scaling up is because of the scaling property um, of, of, of linearity. Right? Um, analogously, um, we could figure out what y1 of n is. right? And y1 of n. Okay, is well, what we have here is we have um, a, a unit impulse that's magnified by a factor of three, right, and shifted over, shifted to the right, or shifted forward um, by one unit, right? And time invariance says, well, you know, that if we have some, um, um, if, if, if we have some um, input um, delta of n and we know the response to it, if we were to shift this over by one unit, then the response would just also be shifted over by one unit. Okay, so y1 of n, if we wanted to be sort of um, rigorous about it, what it equals is it equals 3 times delta of n minus 1. Okay, so delta of n is, is, is given here. Delta of n minus 1 would be something that a version of this, of this impulse function that's shifted by one unit in time. Sorry for my bad drawing here. So that it, it, has, an, it has a value of 1. Um, just at, at, at time step one as opposed to time step zero, okay? And then we have to, of course, triple that because this goes to a value of three, right? And, and correspondingly, what y of one would look like would be this unit impulse response multiplied by three, but then shifted over one to the right, okay? And that would give us something that looks like this. Okay, so at time step zero, it'll be zero. But at time step one, it'll get to six. And at time step two, it'll get to three. OK? Um, <clears throat> analogously, we can do, um, we can figure out what <clears throat> y2 of n is, right? Because x2 of n um, is, um, is the unit impulse that's ma am that's, um, uh, that is amplified by a factor of four and is shifted two units, right? And so what we'll do for y of 2 is we'll take this impulse response, which is 2 and then 1 at times 0 and 1, and then multiply it by 4. So we'll get 8 and 4, but then shift it two units to the right. So instead of happening at 0 and 1, it'll, hap it'll, it'll sort of occur at 2 and 3, so shifted to the right. OK, and of course, the values there would be 8 and 4. I'll leave myself enough room here. Okay, and so, um, and so, so we use this time invariance property to do the shifting. Okay, and we've used the scaling property of the linearity to do the multiplication of the, of, of the size here, right? Um, and then um, finally, we just need to use the, um, the, the the basic sort of you know additive combination property of of, of, of linearity, which is what I mentioned at the beginning, to 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 then um, find out that well y of n is just going to be equal to y1 of n, y0 of n plus y2 of n plus, sorry, y0 of n plus y1 of n plus y2 of n, right? So we can just add these up, 
in some sense. Add up these functions. Okay? The summation of, 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 of the y of n. Right? Maybe I should write this slightly more formally. <clears throat> so we get that the summation of y sub, let's just call it i of n, okay, is equal to y of n, right? And we're going to, think that, and to make the plot, um, what we do is we just sort of go down um, sort of, um, sort of column-wise, right, um, and, and, and add up all the values of, um, values of y0 of n, y1 of n, and y2 of n, like at each particular n, okay? So when n <coughs> is um, less than 0, um, all, these, all these functions are 0, so we have we start, over, start over at 0 here. Um, and then when n is equal to 0, what we have is um, y, y0 is equal to 4, uh, y1 is equal to 0, and y2 is equal to 0. So 4 plus 0 plus 0 is, of course, and I should line this up a little better. Okay, so this is time step 0 here. Uh, 4 plus 0 plus 0 is 4, of course, right? Um, and then <coughs> at time step um, 1, um, what we have is a y0 is equal to 2, and um, y1 is equal to 6, and y2 is equal to 0. So 2 plus 6 plus 0 is, of course, 8. Okay? Draw better 8. Um, and then <coughs> at time step, um, at, at time step 2, what we have is, um, is, is 0 for y0 of n, um, 3 for y1 of n, and um, 8 for y, um, uh, for y2 of n. So, so it's a 0 plus 3 plus 8 is 11. Okay? And then um, <coughs> there's just one more. Um, at time step 3, um, what we have is um, a 0 again for, um, for, for, for y0 of n, um, 0 for y1 of n, and 4 for y2 of n. Okay? And then after time step 4, <coughs> and, then, and then after time step 4, uh, y of n stays 0 for all subsequent time. Okay? So this is... I have a question. Go ahead. Um, why, uh, why is y1 of n not equal to 3 times h of n minus 1, but is delta n minus 1? Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So let me, let, let me just oh, sort of, okay. yes. Um, the reason, so the answer is that it is. I just, I just I wrote it down wrong, okay? So let me be a little bit more clear about that. So everybody please note that's, that's a little mistake, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix these up so it makes more sense. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so let's, just, let's, just, let's just write everything a little bit more formally. So x, um, x0 of n is, gonna, is exactly double the, the, the unit impulse function. And so x0 of n is equal to 2 times delta of n, OK? Um, and then that makes y0 of n. I've drawn y0 of n here. But, but, in, uh, but if we want to be sort of rigorous about it, what this is equal to sort of formulaically is equal to y0 of n is equal to 2 times h of n, OK? So the idea is that delta of n, if, if delta of n was just delta of n by itself was the input, the output would be h of n. But since two, del two times delta of n is the input, then the output is two times h of n. Okay. Um, analogously, um, x one of n um, is is equal to um, three times delta of n minus one. That's what I should have written. I should have written that for x one of n rather than y one of n. Okay. And correspondingly, um, y one of n is going to be three times h of n minus one. Okay. And um, again, and, and, and then if we do this again for uh, x2 of n, x2 of n would be equal to, since um, it is <coughs> um, 4 in height, um, it's going to be 4 times um, delta of n minus 2. Okay? And then the output y2 of n would be correspondingly 4 times h of n minus 2. Okay? So the time invariance property gives us that delta of n minus 2 would by itself give us an output 
of um, h of n minus 2. And the, the, the scaling part of linearity gives us that if we multiply this by 4, the input by 4, we multiply the output by 4. And then the, um, the sum of the components property of linearity gives us that, well, if we can break x of n into these three parts, x0, x1, or x2, in fact, into any three parts, and we can take the outputs from these three parts and add them together to get the total output. OK, is that clear? Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for H of N, could you explain how you got it again? Was it just given to us? or? Did yeah, you yeah. I just, I just I made up an example where I okay. just made up a, a certain example of, of X of N and a certain example of H of N. I could, make it, I could have made it anything. Obviously, if I changed X of N, it would change you know, the work here and the answer. But um, okay. and you can have in H of N could potentially be anything, right? Um, for some particular system, it might be, take some work to figure out what H of N is. In general, um, it's actually not that much work to figure out H of n. If you have a system, you don't know what the impulse response is. What you do is you experimentally give it an impulse input, and then you just read out what the output is, and that tells you what H of n is. Okay? So okay. pretending that for this, you know, prototypical system here, this is the H of n, this is the X of n. So these were both given. Okay? okay. And then so the problem was, given H of n and X of, X of n and H of n, solve, figure out Y of n, and we just did that. Okay. Now, of course, this is just a simple. This is just a single example, right? What we'd like to do is be able to sort of like generalize from what we did here to give like a general form for what y of n is as a function of h of n and, and x of n, right? So you know, the point is that we had a certain h of n and a certain a certain x of n, a certain h of n, and we got y of n. But can we just think about this just a little bit and figure out well how could we get um, how can we find you know, this value? It's, it's y of n turned out kind of funny, right? It's like 4 at time step 0, and then 8 at time step 1, and 11 at time step 2, and then 4 again um, at time step 3. Kind of my tick marks here got a little misaligned. I don't know. I'm not good at drawing things sometimes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then this is at 4. We we'll go back to 0. And so how is it that we got you know, this sort of funny looking answer? Um, giving the, these inputs. It's not you know, just immediately obvious to most people. If you look at you know, this x of n and this h of n, you get um, this um, function for, for y of n, right? But it makes sense that since x of n is limited in time, and h of n is time limited, um, and x of n is, 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 is an input that's happening around and just a little bit beyond time 0, um, that we would get an output that's sort of limited to something roughly around time 0. But how do we get the exact shape um, of it or the exact value of it? All right, and so you could get some insight into that maybe by um, just looking at a sort of an example of what we did. And so um, <clears throat> let's just think about how we got. Um, let's just think about how we got um, y two of n, right? So I got y two of n by adding up the values of y zero, y one, and y two when k was when, when n was equal to um, two, right? So I, I got it by adding zero plus 3 plus 8. Sorry, he's a little misaligned, right? In order to get 11, right? And so let's just write that out a little bit. And so um, this y2 of n here, I'm just going to write it over here, um, right? The way I got it was by, like I said, adding 0 and um, by, by adding 0 and, 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 and 3 and 8. But where did the 0, the 3, and the 8 come from? Right, so <clears throat> let's, let's just, just do the three. Let's do it actually backwards or whatever. I think it might be a little bit easier. Um, and so, where did the eight come from? Okay, so this eight here, right, came from um, the input. It came from this line, right? So it came from x two of n. So it came from the input x of two, right, um, multiplied by so this, this, this input x of two is equal to four, right? And we took this 4, and then we multiplied it by h of n. And then we took the, um, the, the first value of it here, right? So basically, it's h of 0. So this is x of 2, which is 4, multiplied by um, h of 0, which is 2, right? And that was, that's the contribution of um, uh, to, to y2 from, um, from x2 of n, okay, from, or from x of 2. And to that, we add um, <clears throat> this 3. And the, the, where this 3 comes from right, is, um, 
is x1 of, at, at, it's, it's x1, um, which is um, at, at time step 1, right, multiplied by h of 1, which happens to be 1, okay, to give us 3, okay? And, um, <clears throat> and then analogously, for this last term, which turns out to be 0, you can say what, what we're doing is we're going to add x of 0 multiplied by h of 2. Okay? And those are the things that we're going to add up, right? And so we got 0 for this term, this last term, because h of 1, um, so h of 0 is 2, and h of 2 is 1, but h of, uh, h of 1 is, is, is 1, but h of 2 is 0. And so since h of 2 is 0, this last term is equal to 0, right? If this impulse response function had like somehow gone on longer, then what we, we would have had this, this response, y0 of n, would have, would have gone on longer, and, and we would have had a non-zero value there. Okay? And so let's just look at this a little bit. So what we did um, to get um, y, y of 2 is we took the various, value, various values inside of x, x2, x1, and x0, and we multiplied them by some corresponding values of um, the impulse response, h0, h1, and h2, right? So as, x, as the index on x is going down here, the index on h is going up, so they're going in opposite directions, all right? And that makes perfect sense, because if you want to get the output at time 2, what you're going to do is you're going to take the input at time 2 and look at the immediate response from it, There's, right? The response is sort of um, h, h of 0 that comes from it immediately. And if you want to get the output at time 2, you can, you can also to find a contribution from x at time 1, and then find, um, well, what's the response that's delayed one, one, um, one point in time forward from that in order to reach time step 2. Or we could get the value of x at time 0 and then delay it forward in time two time steps to reach time step 2 and, 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 and then and multiply those together. In this case, this h of 2 just happens to be 0 for us in this particular example. Okay? And so in general, we can write this in general, that if we want to know the output y at a time step n, right, um, we could take the value of x at any other time step k, right, and then um, push that forward in time by finding the impulse response at time step n minus k, right? So if we add time step k to um, n minus k, right, to shift, shift k forward by n minus k, so we add k to n minus k, then what we'll do is we'll reach n because k um, plus the quantity n minus k is equal to n, right? So this is, this, is, this, is, this is sort of, you know, each time step, right, of x of n, right? And then this is how much you need to shift Okay, um, they, the the um, that time the, the response from that time step forward in order to reach n. Okay, but of course we, there, it's not just one of these um, values of, of k. We're, we're going to use all possible values of k, and so what we have here would, would be a summation over k. Okay, I'm just going to write that more neatly over here. Right? And so what we have is that y of n is equal to the summation over all possible um, input, um, <coughs> input steps um, x, of, x of k, or summation of k over all k of x of k multiplied by h of n minus k. Okay? And this k is all values, so if you want to be really kind of general about it, the k could go from minus infinity to plus infinity. Um, can I ask a question really quickly? Just one second. Oh, sorry, yeah. um, and, and so just really, and, and so this is turns out to be a, it's a crucial equation, and um, this equation it's imp so important we have a name for it and we call it the convolution sum. Or it's convolution summation. Okay. And another way to uh, sort of just talk about this or, or to write it is that um, that. This convolution sum is what gives you the convolution between x and k. So another way to sort of write this is that y of n is equal to um, x of k 
convolved with H of K. Okay? And it turns out that convolution is a commutative operation, so it doesn't matter the order of the way we convolve things. And so this ha also happens, and the homework asks you to prove this, um, to be equal to H of K convolved with X of K. Okay? And for shorthand, we could, also, we could write this just as Y is equal to X convolved with H, which is equal to H convolved with X. And this funny looking star here is, this is the um, so-called convolution operator. And what the convolution operator does is define, is, is, this, uh, is, is, is this convolution summation. Okay, sorry, question. Yeah, yeah, my question was just like, I think I might have missed it really quickly, but um, so H of, uh, H of N isn't like an output, it's just a response to no, the input? No, response means output. So H of N is the res response or the output, which is synonymous, that you would get if the input to the system was this um, unit impulse, which I managed to erase here. Okay. Okay, so if the input is equal to, you know, I'll just draw it again, delta of n, um, if, if it, you know, if the input is this input, which is you know, just a value 1 at, at time step 0 and 0 everywhere else, then the response in this particular case would be, is, is, what, is what h of n is. Okay. okay? And what Thank we you. did is we used that um, response h of n for this particular input to then figure out what the response is for in some arbitrary input. And it turns out the answer is, 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 is this, this convolution sum, which we can sort of write as a shorthand as, as a sort of convolution operation here. Thank you. OK. All right, so you can sort of follow up on that just a little bit and sort of um, um, take this um, sort of definition where um, of, of, of thinking about the input that X of N is going to some system that's characterized by its impulse response H of N to give you Y of N. And so then um, what we have is that Y of N is then just equal to the con as X of N convolved with H of N. So that's the sort of the answer. That you can think of this as sort of an equation that you know, X going through, an uh, input X going through a system H um, gives you an output Y that's equal to x convolved with h, right? And also be equal to h convolved with x, because that's the same as x convolved with h, OK? And that's some, sort of a, a framework for sort of thinking about how things go, OK? And this, and this convolution is a sort of maybe, I don't know, complicated looking. It's not too complicated, but in all these summations, all these infinite summations are always a little bit complicated looking. Um, and this, 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 um, th th this summation, OK? All right. so. Um, that's all I'm going to talk about in terms of actually material. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to we're going to use that um, and, and some of the stuff we talked about um, in class time um, last time to, to go through um, problems um, on the problem set with with the remaining 20 minutes we have. Okay. Um, all right. So um, does anyone have any questions just about this material? Okay. So I'll make some room for myself here. <clears throat> okay, so let's go through. I guess we can just go through. Um, I know you guys didn't have a long time to look at the um, homework problems, but this, if, if anyone did have time to look at it, is there any particular problem you want, you want me to start with, or otherwise I'll kind of start from the beginning a little bit, skipping over some stuff. I'm sorry, can I ask one last question about the, yeah, yeah so um, is, does the reason, like the reason you can do, like, do you multiply, is the, is the only reason you can multiply because of the unit impulse function, like because it's equal to one, is that why you can just multiply it, like, because x of two is four times the unit function? Yes, X of, right. So okay. the point is that because okay. X of T is four, is, is, you know, for example, it was, I mean, I don't know, I think we found that X2 of N was, 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 was equal to four times um, delta of N minus two in this particular problem, right? Um, okay. Then what that gives you is that the output Y2 of N would be equal to um, four times H of N minus two. 
right? And so the okay. reason that we could um, do this multiplication by four is because of the scaling property of, um, of, of, of linearity, right? And the reason that we could um, th that we could say the delta of n minus two goes to h of n minus two is from the time invariance property, right? And both of those were is a part, sort of part and parcel of this LTI. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. So, let me pull this up here. Okay. So you might, guys might want to just follow along on, on, on your own. I'm not going to put the problems up because I don't want to take too much screen. Um, and I'm not set up to do it right now anyway. Okay. So the first couple of problems are um, basically about sort of just doing some math to kind of um, sort of figure out the, the, the properties of, um, of, 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 of convolution, okay? Um, and um, I think I have, I have here um, doing this for both discrete and continuous cases. And so we didn't, since we didn't really you know, get a little backed up here or whatever, um, we didn't go through the continuous case. I'm gonna, I'll make an addendum to the homework to say that you only need to do this for, um, for this week for the, for the discrete case, okay? And, and not, not the continuous case, okay? So just to, just to write this again, so we'll use it. I just erased it for no good reason. Um, what we have is that, is, is that convolution, right, um, is defined um, such that um, y of n is, um, in, in, at least in the um, discrete case, is equal to the summation of x of um, n minus k times <clears throat> h of k over all possible k, right? And we said it's, it's commutative, so um, that's, that, that also can be written as um, the summation over all possible k of x of k times h of n minus k, which is the way I, I originally wrote it today. Okay? And, and the first problem um, asks you to prove that, um, that first, convolution uh, is commutative, um, second, that it's associative, and, and third, um, that it's linear. Okay? So let's let this um, do that, right? So in a way, this just sort of comes down to, to math. That basically the, the assertion is that no matter what n, what what x of n and 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 h of n are, what what these functions x and h are, like no matter what, like this version of the summation will be equal to um, this um, this the second version of, of the summation, right? And so the classic way to do a problem like this is to make a variable substitution, right? And so let's just suppose I, um, I just made a, a variable substitution into the first equation, and I just said that let's just define a new variable, j, that's equal to n minus k, okay? And then we're going to write this um, summation um, in terms of, 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 of j um, instead, okay? So if j is equal to n um, minus k, then, of course, we could solve for, um, for k in this, and that would make um, k equal to n minus j, right? That just follows from, from, from that other line I wrote, all right? And then we can substitute these in to the, the, this, this top equation. And what we get would be that y of n, okay, is equal to the summation, right, of instead of n mi x of n minus k, we could just write x of j, right? And, 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 and we could substitute in for k here as is n minus j um, multiplied by, x, by, by h of n minus j, okay? And um, <clears throat> since um, j is equal to n minus k, right, um, when k is equal to negative infinity, j will be equal to what? Well, I'll just, just be on for much time. So j, if, when k is equal to negative infinity, um, which is sort of the beginning part of the summation, then j will be equal to, equal to positive infinity. And similarly, when k is equal to positive infinity, j will equal to negative infinity, as long as n is finite, which, which it is. We're always looking for like, you know, finite values of, 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 of the function um, y of n. All right? And so um, if we want to take the summation like over all values of k going between negative infinity and positive infinity, that's correspond that corresponds to um, the summation of all values of j between positive infinity and negative infinity. But of course, it doesn't matter 
like what order you multiply, what, what, what order you, you add things together in a summation, right? 4 plus 2 plus 3 is the same as, as 3 plus 2 plus 4. And so what we can then sort of say is that this is basically just equal to the summation of j um, from positive infinity to negative infinity, but that's also going to be equal to um, the summation of j between negative infinity and positive infinity of the same thing, x of j times h of n minus j, right? And if we look at this, we realize, well, there's no reason we have to call this variable j. We can actually just call it k or k prime or something. And so if we were to then just um, change the name j into the name k, then what we get is um, the summation um, from k equals minus infinity to infinity of x of k times h of n minus k. Okay? And then we're done, right? Because what we did was we started off with, um, with, with this version of the summation where you had x of n minus k uh, multiplied by h of k. And then we just did a little bit of, of substitution in some algebra. Um, and we got um, the other version, x of k multiplied by h of n minus k um, with, with this infinite sum. OK? All right. So um, that's how you do the, this um, commutative um, thing. Um, the, the associative um, version um, is, um, you know, is, is becomes um, fairly similar. Okay, and so I'll, I'll I'll leave that so you can talk about a different kind of of, of, of problem. Okay. Um, well, let's just do the. <clears throat> yeah. No, that's fine. Okay. So now let's move on to talking about um, problem two. Okay. So problem two says that on um, on, on separate axes, um, I'm sorry, make sure I get this on the screen here. Okay, so problem two says on separate axes, um, sketch plots of x of n, x of n minus one, um, x of n minus four, and um, and um, and x of n um, plus two. Okay. Um, and that's what I'm going to do in general. And so for 2a in particular, what we have, so, sorry, so this is like problem one. I'm having so much trouble with these patterns today. So this is problem one here. Um, so for problem two, okay. Um, um, for, for 2a in particular, this, we said um, let n be um, the discrete time unit impulse function. x of n is, is equal to delta of n. So in this particular case, x of n is just our delta of n, which looks like this. Right? It has a value of 1 at, at, at time 0. Okay? And the problem says um, you should um, sketch um, x of n, which, is, which we just did, um, but also x of n minus 1. Okay. So x of n minus 1 is the time-shifted version of, of x of n, so it would just look like this. All right? Um, and so if, if it's not obvious to you, if you're, um, you're not sort of familiar with this sort of time-shifting property, you can just think that, well, when and when the argument to x is equal to 0, right, that's when x is equal to 1. And so for x of n minus 1, the argument to x is equal to 0 when n is equal to 1, because 1 minus 1 is, is equal to 0, right? And so that's where x has, has the value of 1, right? And for any other arguments um, um, besides, um, besides 0, then x of n is going to be equal to 0. And so um, for any values of n greater, uh, other than 1, then um, x of n will be equal to 0, like this. Okay? Um, similarly, um, x of n minus 2 um, is just going to be time shifted to um, time point um, to n equals 2. And, <clears throat> sorry, that's not what was asked for. It was asked, it was asked n minus 4, right? So that's going to be time shifted to n equals 4, okay? And x of n plus 2, right, which of course is, is equal to x of n minus negative 2, 
right, would be some version of this that where the, um, where, where the impulse is shifted to time point negative 2. Okay? So that's pretty straightforward. Okay. So for problem 3, um, it says, um, consider a discrete system similar to the ones um, like we discussed just now, um, but um, instead, but uh, in, in this case, what we have is that y of n is equal to 0.5 times x of n plus 0.5 times x of n minus 1. Okay? So one way to um, think about um, input-output relationships is in terms of the impulse um, response function, right? Another is just to have a sort of direct equation like what's in this problem for the input-output um, response. And so, um, <clears throat> but it it's actually turns out to be incredibly easy to, um, to, to, convert, um, um, to, to convert between these, and we'll get to that in, in part B, okay? And so, um, what we have is that y of n, problem 3, um, is equal to um, 0 0.5 times x of n plus 0 0.5 again times x of n minus 1, all right? And... <clears throat> um, the first um, question, which is A, um, says, um, is this system linear? Is it time invariant? Um, is it memoryless? Um, is, it, is it causal? Okay? Um, and then does um, Y um, equal to X convolved with H? So that's actually five questions there. So. Okay? Um, so um, is this system linear, right? So um, what we have is, is that y of n is a linear combination of x of n at, at different time points, okay? And so whenever you have that y of n is the sum of just scaled versions of x of n at different times, this will always be linear. Okay? Um, and is it time invariant? So um, <clears throat> for time invariance, what we would have is if we shifted these inputs to, to, to different times, right, um, then what would the, the, would the output be shifted um, to different times? And, and that's actually fairly easy to show here. So if we made the substitution that, say, like, you know, n was equal to some m minus k. So we shifted um, by, by, by some amount k, but, but, but we'll, we'll just call the amount that we're shifting it to m, right? Then what we have is that y of um, m minus k this directly from this equation is going to be equal to 0.5 times x of m minus k plus 0 0.5 times x of m minus k minus 1. And this is pretty much directly the, um, the definition of, of time invariance. Okay? And so the system is time invariant. Okay? Um, the next thing it asks is um, is this system memoryless, right? So a memoryless system means that y of n depends only um, on, on, on x at the same time point n and not on x at any other time points, okay? So clearly here, y of n depends on both x of n and x of n minus 1. So um, this system has some memory. It depends on x and some, and some, previous, um, at some previous time point. And so the system is time invariant, but it's not memoryless. Right? And that's because we have an x of n minus 1 sort of term um, contributing to um, y of n. Um, is it causal? So a causal system means that um, y of n depends on x of n at the current time and previous times, okay? um, but not future times. And so what you see here is, it's, um, x, is x of n is, is the current time, and x of n minus 1 is sort of one time step in, in the past. Um, but there is no like x of n plus 3 or x of n plus 7, which would be time steps in the future. So the system is causal. Okay, because um, y of n depends on, on x of n and x of n minus some k, where k is like a positive number, so there are different amounts of time in the past. And then last question is, does y um, equal to x convolved with h? Well. 
um, to, for convolution to be true, we need a system to be both time invariant, right, and linear, right? And since this system is both linear and time invariant, then, um, then, it's, um, then y is going to be equal to x convolved with h. Okay? So that's problem three. Um, and let us do one more problem. Um, let's do problem five in the last couple of minutes. It shouldn't take too long. Okay. So for problem five, it says um, let's consider um, the discrete system y of n is equal to x of n um, multiplied by x of n minus one. Okay. So, <clears throat> and we're asking the same questions, right? Um, is this system um, is it is this system linear? Um, and the answer, of course, here would be no. Right, because you're taking some, you're, you're multiplying um, um, values of x at, at different time lags together, and there's, there's no way that that could be linear. So be like, this is an x, like as opposed to not, like not a check. Okay, um, let's just write no. <clears throat> All right, um, is the system um, time invariant? Well, yes, it is. Right, because if we were to um, write this as like sort of y of m minus n minus k or n, m minus k. Um, we could just substitute in n for m minus k, and we would get x of m minus k times x of m minus k minus 1. And then we could um, substitute this as, substitute back um, n for m. We get as n, y of n minus k is equal to x of n minus k. Um, multiplied by x of n minus k minus 1. And like I said, for the other system, this is basically the exact definition of time invariance. And so for time invariance, um, what we have is that um, no, this is true. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, if the equation were instead y of n is equal to n times x of n, and so on and so forth, it would no longer be time invariant. That's, that's absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. OK. Um, <clears throat> the next question is, lost my place here. Um, is the system memoryless? And the answer to this is obviously no. Right, because um, x at x at um, y of n depends on x at the current time, which is which is good for which is fine for being memoryless, but also depends at x at some other time, any other time, um, and, and and so because um, there's an x of n minus one or an x of n minus k for any k here, um, the system is, is 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 not memoryless, right? Um, is it causal? Yes, because there are just n's and n minus k's for k being positive numbers here. And there's no, um, there's no time in the future like x of n plus 2 or x of n plus 3. So causal is yes. OK. And does y um, equal to x convolved with h? Well, for, x, um, for y to be equal to x um, equal to the convolution of, of, of x of n and h of n, what we need is the system to be linear and time invariant. And so the system here um, is time invariant, um, but it's not linear, right? And so the answer is no. OK? So um, let's sketch the impulse. The next question is to sketch the impulse response um, for the system, OK? And so the impulse response um, h of n, right, is the um, output that you would get if the input was the delta function. Okay, so um, <clears throat> clearly, um, when um, n is is as, as, as a value, um, this is n on this axis, of course. When n is a value like a, um, a 
less than zero, right, then h of n will clearly be zero, right? Um, but when n is um, value of, of, of zero or one, then something sort of, you know, possibly interesting happens, okay? So um, when n is a value um, zero, right, then what we have is x of zero um, multiplied by x of negative one, right? And so x of zero for an impulse is equal to one, but x of negative one is equal to zero. So we have one times zero, which is zero, okay? And then similarly, when um, n is equal to one, right, um, x of x of 1, which would be, would, would be um, delta of 1, would be, would be 0, and x of n minus 1 is x of 1 minus 1 is x of 0, would be 1. So it would be 0 times 1, and that would also be 0. Okay? And then, of course, for values of n that are 2 or greater, both of these terms, x of n and x of n minus 1, are both 0, and so, of course, we'll get 0 when we multiply them. Okay? So weirdly, the impulse response um, for um, this um, f um, f for this system is actually zero for all time. Okay, so h of n basically is just equal to zero. That's what the impulse response is. All right. I, see I didn't do the impulse response over here. Um, and in this case, um, we, can, we could do sort of the same thing. And um, h of n um, for problem three um, would um, would of course be zero for all times um, less than um, less than negative one. Okay, but um, at time zero, right, then what we would get would be um, 0.5 times x of zero, which is 0.5 times one for the unit input, um, plus 0.5 times x of a negative one, which is zero. And so what we get would be 0.5, right? And then um, at time step one, right next to zero here, um, what we get would be um, y, of, y of one, would be equal to 0.5 times x of 1. So x of 1 for the unit impulse is 0. So it would be 0.5 times 0 plus 0.5 times x of n minus 1. So that would be 0.5 times x of 0, which would be 1. And so we get 0.5 again. Okay, And then once we get to time step um, 2, then um, x of n um, is, is equal to 2 and x of um, n minus uh, x of n is equal to x of 2, and x of n minus 1 is equal to x of 1, and both of those are 0, and so we go down to 0 forevermore. Okay? So the impulse response here is just 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 at time step 0 and 1, and 0 everywhere else. Okay, at all other time steps, like 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever. Okay, negative 1. Of two, et cetera. All right, um, and so in general, if you um, if you have an equation like this, uh, y of n um, is equal to some you know so alpha times x of n um, plus some beta times x of n minus one. What you'll have is that the impulse response will um, be equal to alpha at time zero, right? So x of you can alpha of x of n minus one. You can also think of this as alpha of x of n minus zero, right? Um, and so the impulse response will be alpha at time step zero plus beta at time step, um, at, at time step one um, plus you know, zero everywhere else. Um, okay, I so have you a can directly read off from these coefficients um, to the impulse response. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so for future questions, are we just supposed to assume um, x of n is a unit impulse function. That was called. Yeah. Sorry. No. Um, so that. So what I was doing here, right, um, for both of these, is I was I was asked in the problem, right, in in in, in part B of this is this is five B, right. I was, I was asked to draw the impulse response, right. So the impulse response is the response when x is equal to 0. So x is not going to be equal to 0. So x, sorry, is, it, impulse response is the response when the input x is equal to the unit impulse. That's what 5b okay. is, right? And okay. Thank you. 4b, right? So for those cases, yes, right? But in general, no. Okay? 
Thank you. All right. So um, I'll, I'll stop there and, and, and take any questions anybody, that anybody has. I have a question. Yeah. Could you repeat um, what, in general, the impulse response is if you have like a linear combination of X of N at different times? Sure, right. So that was a sort of example I was going through just at the very end super quickly, right? And that if mm -hmm. I have um, the, well, I'm just, I'm just going to write it out like in more generality here. That if I have a linear combination of, if I have Y of N is a linear combination of X of N at different time lags, so um, I write this in general, like Y of N is equal to alpha times X of N minus zero plus beta um, times x of n minus 1 um, plus gamma times um, <clears throat> x of n minus 2, right? Then the impulse response um, h of n would be um, 0 at all times before t equals 0, okay? And then at time t equals 0, um, time t equals 1, and time t equal 2, it will have non-zero values, okay? And those values um, will be um, alpha and beta and gamma, okay? So for instance, if I give you a real sort of example, y of n is equal to um, x of n plus um, 3 times x of n minus 2, right, then um, h of n would be equal to, <clears throat> um, would be equal to 0 at all times before, so x of n, of course, is the same thing as x of n minus 0, right? Um, so h of n would be 0 before all times, uh, all times before 0, and then at time step 0 would be the coefficient of x of n, which is implied here to be 1, right? Um, so it would have value 1, at time step zero, okay? And then the um, x of n minus one term is missing, right? So of course that's the same as saying it's zero times x of n minus one. I did it out of order there, but that's fine, right? And so since that term's missing, it's, it's, it's none of that term, and so we'll go back to zero here, and then for the n x of n minus two term, um, the value would be three, right? And that would happen, and that, so the value of the impulse response at time step two um, would be three. And then, since there are no other terms, there are all other values of n, the impulse response would be zero. Okay, thank you. All right. Anything else? Yeah, I had a quick question about the example that you have on the left, I believe. Is it x of n? Oh, sorry, the other this, this left. Sorry, this no, no, no. <laughs> right in front of you, right in front of you. This one from my face. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the linearity, I know there are like two factors. It has to be multiplied by a constant. Mm -hmm. And when you add them together, they should be um, addable. Um, yeah. Can you right, so I did, a, right, I did a little bit of a shortcut here, right? Okay. Um, and so I, I just said that you know, when, 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 whenever you have terms that um, in the input that are multiplying each other, right, you just know um, that. So if you have terms in the input that are doing anything besides adding and subtracting one another, it will always be nonlinear. Oh, okay. okay, so that's just always going to be true. Now, what, if I want to be like really rigorous about this, what I could do is I could just I, I could just give some example, right, of some x of n broken down into x one of n um, and um, x two of n, right, um, and 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 then show that the uh, that the responses to x one of n to x to, to um, the response to, 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 to the x of n is not equal to the sum of those responses, okay? And that would certainly be true here, right? Um, it turns out that the scaling property of linearity does actually work in this particular example, right? But, it's, but both the scaling and the summation of inputs um, properties have to work, and the summation of inputs um, fails here. And I was sort of, I did it sort of quick and dirty, and I didn't actually sort of like prove that, right? And so to prove it really, all I have to do, if to prove something's not true, that's like one example where it doesn't work. Right, and so you know, one example that sort of comes to mind is that if, well, I'll just I'll just take that offline. I don't want to take everyone's time with that. But I mean, there are lots of almost any example that, that, that you try will basically fail there. I could go through one of them, but 
um, I, I'll, I'll save that for the um, office hours or something. And that makes sense. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, thanks, guys. And again, apologize for um, sort of you know the sort of late posting this week. We'll try to be um, get it um, get things running much more smoothly um, starting next week. All right. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.